Bruh, I'm so stoked to learn how to take basic vital signs today. Dude, me too, I can't wait either. We're gonna be like saving the world, bro. I can't wait to learn how to assess that like blood pressure and heart rate, bro. Oh my gosh. What? What if there was a way to do them simultaneously? Dude, I like the way you're thinking, bro. Let's try it. Bro. Yeah, dude, here we go. Okay, so now I gotta do like this, and then, okay. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to my nursing channel, Nursing Basics. Did you like that little skit? Don't ever put a blood pressure cover on your neck. That's not useful at all. That was just for the skit. My name is Ronald Cameron. I just graduated nursing school. Woo -woo! And the purpose of this YouTube channel is to help explain concepts in nursing school. I want to make things super easy to understand. I mean, if I made it to nursing school, you can do it too. This is a life-size replica of my brain. My teachers can attest to it as well. And I made it through. I'm just joking, my brain is much smaller. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the basics. Vital signs. I hope this is the oral one. So first I'm going to explain what the basic vital signs are, and then I'm going to show you guys how to take a set of vital signs. So make sure you stick around till the end, all right? The four basic vital signs are heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, and temperature. Additionally, in nursing school, you will most certainly learn that the fifth vital sign is pain. And finally, you will learn how to assess oxygen saturation. When I take a set of vitals, I like to start with oxygen saturation. So essentially, pulse oximetry is the least invasive, easiest way to measure the oxygen levels in the arterial blood and how well the tissues away from the heart are perfusing. A normal O2 range in an adult is anywhere from 94 to 100. Little disclaimer here, go with what you are taught because there are varying sources. Some say 94, some say 95, and some say 96. So just go with what you're talking. Another cool thing about these little bad boys is that they give you a heart rate. So it just kind of gives you a very, very, very brief basic rundown of how the patient is doing. After oxygen saturation, I like to assess pain. In an adult, pain is measured on a scale of 0 to 10. 0 being, nah man, I'm chilling, no pain. 10 being, oh my gosh, my arm is being sawed up! So you want to make sure a patient's pain is under control, because if their pain is not under control, it can most definitely throw off their other vital signs. They could potentially have an elevated heart rate, elevated respiratory rate, and elevated blood pressure. After pain, I like to do heart rate and respiratory rate. A normal heart rate in an adult is anywhere from 60 to 100 beats per minute. That's how many times this little bad boy squeezes in one minute. And respirations, that is also measured in how many breaths you take in one minute. So when I assess heart rate and respiratory rate, I like to assess them simultaneously for one minute. A heart rate can be assessed in many locations, such as the radial artery, brachial artery, carotid artery. Heck, you can even use your stethoscope to listen to this bad boy pump. This isn't just a prop, it's useful. So in one minute, I will count the beats in 30 seconds, and then the remaining 30 seconds, I will count their respirations. So keep in mind that it's 30 seconds. So if I count 40 beats in 30 seconds, I'm gonna multiply that by two for a heart rate of 80 beats per minute. Same with respirations. If I count seven respirations in those 30 seconds, I'm gonna multiply that by two for a total of 14 breaths per minute. After I've done the heart rate and respiratory rate, I like to move to blood pressure. Blood pressure is pretty much measuring the force of your heart against the arteries when it contracts. So there are two numbers for blood pressure, the top number and the bottom number. The top number is systolic, so that's the force against the arteries when this bad boy contracts. And the bottom number is the diastolic, and that's the force against the arteries when your heart is relaxed. And blood pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury. So the American Heart Association recommends that a blood pressure of 120 over 80 or less is ideal. So try to stay healthy and keep that blood pressure low. After blood pressure, I like to do temperature. The average temperature is 98.6. Remember that it's an average. So if your patient comes in with a temperature of 97.9 or 99, that's fine. It's 98.6 plus or minus one degree generally. Temperature, like the heart rate, can be assessed in many different locations. You can do the temporal with those fancy little scanner gadgets. I'm too broke, so I've just got a crappy little oral one. 
You can also do tympanic, you can do axillary, and everybody's most feared, the rectal route. So rectal is gonna be the most accurate because it's going to give us an internal reading of how warm or cold the patient actually is. All right guys, so those are the basic vital signs. We're gonna go ahead and show you guys how to take a quick set of them, but before we do, there's some important things you should always remember. Always identify your patient with at least two patient identifiers. The more the merrier, that way it prevents mistakes always perform hand hygiene, introduce yourself, and let your patient know what you're gonna be doing. When you let your patient know what you're gonna be doing, it generally calms them down, makes them less anxious, and they know exactly what to expect in the near future. If the setting is appropriate, I personally like to crack a joke, but that's important to gauge the setting. If somebody just died, you don't wanna walk into the room and be like, hey, how's it going? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and learn how to take a quick set of vital signs. Let's do this! All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and take a quick set of vitals, but remember like I told you in that last little bit. And hygiene. Then identify your patient. Can I have your name and date of birth, please? Jennifer Cameron, July 11th, 94. Matches my records. They're imaginary, but they're here. So, do you know what we're gonna be doing today? No. no we're just <laughs> gonna be taking a quick set of vital signs. So, in order to do that, you are going to need a blood pressure cuff, also known as a sphygmomimometer. It's complicated to say a little pulse oximeter, this one's cute, it's like a mini alligator, and then a thermometer. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the pulse oximeter. So as you can see, her pulse oximeter is reading 98 and her heart rate is 82. Okay, so now we're going to assess the patient's pain. So, Mrs. Cameron, what's your pain at on a scale of zero to 10? 12. We need to fix that. Just kidding. What it's is it? It's a zero. That's good. Okay, so next we're going to do heart rate and respiration. So we're gonna do this for a full minute. So the first 30 seconds, we are going to do the heart rate. We're gonna count the beats in 30 seconds. And then the respiration, so it's going to be the next 30 seconds. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And now we're gonna take a blood pressure. So, like I said, you're gonna need your blood pressure cuff and a stethoscope. So I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can get a nice close-up view, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and place the stethoscope and begin inflating the cuff. In nursing school, you'll most certainly learn about what carotid cough sounds are. These are the sounds you hear when taking a blood pressure. The first carotid cough sound you will hear is going to be the systolic blood pressure, in this case, 98. And the last carotid cough sound you will hear is the diastolic, in this case, 62, for a blood pressure of 98 over 62 millimeters of mercury. Lastly, we're gonna get a temperature and we're going to do the oral route this time. Thank God. You want to place a thermometer right underneath the patient's tongue and have them close their mouth. We will let that sit there for a second until it reads. And the temperature is 98.2. All right guys, so I know what some of you are thinking, that blood pressure was a little low. However, it's always important to ask a patient if they usually run a little low. Most of the time, patients will, will let you know if they have a lower heart rate, a lower core body temperature, and a lower blood pressure. Just because it's low and outside of the average range doesn't mean it's harmful for them. So never be afraid to ask them. All right, guys, good job. You just learned how to take a basic set of vital signs. I'm proud of you for learning. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know how you take vital signs. Maybe you do it in a different order. Let me know, I love to learn. Here's a quick NCLEX tip before I forget. Here we go, remember this. Basic vital signs on the NCLEX only include heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, and temperature. They do not include oxygen saturation and pain, so keep that in mind. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. If you're in nursing school, keep it up. You're gonna be a great nurse. If you're watching this for kicks and giggles, I hope you learned something and I hope it wasn't boring. I know you just learned how to take a basic set of vitals. I would encourage you to never forget the basics of life. Be kind and do good. Peace out. So if you'd like a more detailed explanation of pulse oximetry, make sure you check out this video. And if you'd like a more detailed video of blood pressure and how to take it, check this video.